Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode, we're gonna be discussing the differences between the Homelink garage door opening system for your Tesla and the recently released MyQ connected garage system that's also integrated into your Tesla now. And we're gonna be discussing the differences between them and the requirements to have in order for each one of those to work. And then we're gonna be setting up the MyQ connected garage in my Tesla. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. We're coming right back at you. All right, everybody, well, welcome back. So like I was saying, we're going to be discussing the differences between Homelink in your Tesla and the recently released MyQ connected garage by Chamberlain. Chamberlain is the company that actually offers that service. So let's first talk about Homelink. Now, Homelink has been available on the Teslas for quite a few years now. And the thing about the Homelink is it's something that's come into a lot of vehicles for many, many years now, probably 10 or maybe even 15 years. Homelink has been something that a lot of vehicles have had and typically they just give you a button that's on your mirror trim or maybe up by your visor and then you just connect that to your garage door opener typically you would just hit the button on your garage door opener run out to your car hit the button on your visor or wherever and then it pairs those two units together in order for you to be able to open your garage and close it but with tesla they've gone a little bit further with that with the uh home link system and now the MyQ connected garage system. So let's first talk about Homelink. So Homelink is something that you need to get installed in your Tesla. It is not a standard equipment item for Teslas. You actually do have to purchase it. And it is a $350 product that you have to purchase from their website and then have it installed by Tesla. So this is a relatively expensive install for that vehicle but it's a one-time thing. Once you pay for it, you have it installed, it's there for the life of the vehicle and it will continue to function just like any other car with a home link button in it. So that seems like the best choice, right? Go for that, 350 bucks, you're done, right? Well, there's a couple caveats to that. So you do have to pay the $350, you do have to get it installed, but keeping in mind that that is only for that one vehicle, that vehicle that it gets installed in, because it's professionally installed, you'd have to have it professionally uninstalled and then put into another vehicle. And I don't even know if that's possible, but it seems like more of a hassle than it would be worth to try to move that from vehicle to vehicle. This is something that the MyQ benefits from because it's not a physical piece of product in your vehicle. But Homelink does have a lot of cool features. You do have the ability to geolocate your vehicle near your house. And therefore, when you drive away from your house, it can automatically close your garage door. It can also automatically open your garage door, which is a really cool feature of having a garage door opener built into your vehicles that it can do those automatic things. Also, the MyQ can also do this, which we'll get into that in a little bit. And we're going to be testing that feature as well. There's the home link story for you. $350, you can get it installed. It interfaces on your screen. You hit the button and everything works as it should. And you only have to pay for it once, which is nice, but you have no way of transferring that to another vehicle. So it goes with the vehicle once it is sold. Now let's talk about the MyQ connected garage and why this might be more beneficial to you or less beneficial to you. Now the MyQ connected garage does require some physical product. However, that physical product is actually not in the vehicle. The MyQ software is what's in the vehicle recently released in the update in December. But you will need at least one thing in your garage, which would be either a compatible MyQ garage door opener with the MyQ ability built into that, or you would have to buy this little adapter hub that you would mount in your garage that connects to your garage just like any other garage door opener. You just program it to the garage door, and then you also connect that to your Wi-Fi network, which makes it cloud accessible, which means that you can open up your garage from anywhere. And I've had one of these devices in my garage for quite a few years now. And it's really nice to have a device that you can just pull your phone out, open the app and hit the button and the garage door just opens up for you as it should. 
And so this has been a really cool feature. And the only thing you pay for is that MyQ connected hub that you have to install in your garage. And really, it's a pretty inexpensive hub that you buy. And I'll put a link in the description if it's something that you're interested in just looking at. But that is the one physical piece that you need. Now, keep in mind that once you have that installed in your garage, and then you have the app on your phone, it is free to use and you can use multiple people to access it. Multiple people can open it. You can even give guest access. It's actually a really cool program and it could help in a pinch if you ever have a, you know, a garage door opener go bad or maybe if you have one of those control panels on the outside of your garage door and it, the battery dies, it just stops functioning. So this is a great alternative to having a, a separate entryway ability to get into your, your garage. And so, I think that's a really cool thing, but here's where the bigger cost comes in. In order for you to use the MyQ connected garage with your Tesla, you do have to pay for a subscription. And let's just take a quick look at the subscription costs. And then that's when you can determine whether or not it makes sense to you to have this versus getting the home link installed for the $350 cost. So I got my cheat sheet out here and I'm just going to go ahead and go over the pricing and I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it as well. So as you can see, they offer a one year subscription and it's $45. So that means it would take you quite a few years to get up to that $350 mark in order to match the home link price versus this. So you can have this for quite a few years before you start to encroach on that same price that the home link would have costed you. Then you can get the five-year plan. The five-year plan does save you a couple bucks. It is $180 for five years. So it says you save about 20%, which is a pretty good savings if you wanted to pay for those five years up front. And then there is the 10-year plan. I don't know anybody that offers a 10-year plan subscription plan. It just seems kind of ridiculous. Now, of course, this will probably help if there ever is an increase in the price because you've already paid for it because this is a $300 plan completely upfront, which means it comes out to be about $30 a year, which means you save about 34% on the total cost. Now you're saying, well, I don't want to pay 10 years up front because what happens if I sell my car? Well, that's the greatest part about the MyQ system is that even if you do sell your car, you just move the MyQ connectivity from that car to another car. And if you have multiple Tesla vehicles, you can actually have this functionality in multiple vehicles with one subscription. So that's what's really cool about this is that you can actually bundle up and actually save more money in the long run. So over the course of 10 years, by the time you buy this plan for $300 and you buy the, let's say the hub, the garage, the connected hub for your garage, it would only cost you about $330, give or take, plus tax. And then you have a 10 year solution that would be the equivalent cost of one home link for one vehicle. So if you're planning on keeping your Tesla for 10 years, the home link might be the better idea. But if you're also deciding that, hey, you know, I'm probably gonna get a new Tesla every three to five years, this is definitely going to be the better solution for you. Not including the fact that the MyQ will also give the ability to access it from your phone. And also you can give guest access like I mentioned before. So it's really cool if you have guests over and you just wanna have them to have the ability to open up your garage, you give them that limited ability to do so for the time that they're there. Now, currently on the website that I'm at, you can actually scroll down a little bit and it does say that with a 30 day trial, cause you do get a 30 day trial of this, you could try it out in your Tesla if you like, that you'll get a free MyQ Garage Hub. Now, I don't know if this is for people who've never had an account before or if this is for people who can get it anyway, regardless, but I think that's a really cool thing to add to that is that you can actually get a free hub for your garage. So I don't know if this is limited. That's why I say over the course of 10 years, depending on when you get into this, you may have to pay for the hub separately or they might keep this offer forever. I don't know, but that's a really cool thing as well. It's a little bit more savings up front in order for you to get this connected to your vehicle. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we discussed the differences between Homelink for your Tesla and the MyQ connected garage for your Tesla. So now it's up to you to decide whether or not one, 
is worth more than the other and which one would you rather go for? Now, personally, I believe this is a way for Tesla to start to discontinue the Homelink uh, adapter or thing on their website because honestly, this is such a better and easier way to manage your garage door stuff is just to have software in the vehicle as opposed to hardware in the vehicle and then you just have a small piece of cheap hardware in your house or your garage to control that side of it. So I think that's where Tesla's going with this. But anyway, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the process of how to set this up for you in your Tesla using the MyQ connected garage. So let's go ahead and jump in to see how this looks on the screen. And then we'll go through the step-by-step -step process of what you need to do. And honestly, it's not very difficult. Now, obviously the steps might be slightly different if you are already a MyQ connected garage, you'll still get the 30 day trial, but it may be slightly different as far as the setup because you already have an account. So all you gotta do is sign into the account as opposed to if you're new, you'll have to create the account. So we're gonna be going about this as if we already have an account, but keep in mind that when you get to that step, you may actually have to sign up. Now, the 30 day trial does not require a credit card at this point in time, but I'm actually going to sign up for it today. But then after we get all set up and signed in, we're gonna go ahead and test out how it works and how well it works. So let's go ahead and jump into the car. So the first thing we wanna do here is just open up the settings. So if you just hit the little car icon in the bottom there, this will bring up your settings of your Tesla. Next thing we're gonna do, and you might actually see this right here. There's a little house right here on the screen in the top corner. If you click on that house, it'll say link my Q account. If for some reason you don't see that, all you gotta do is go into locks right here, scroll to the bottom and you'll see my Q connected garage and you could click the link account button there. Now it gives you a QR code to set it up. So the next thing you wanna do is just bring out your phone, scan the QR code there on the screen, and that'll bring you to the next part of uh, setting up the car on your phone. Once you scan that QR code and you get to the website, it's gonna say, add MyQ connected garage control to your Tesla vehicle to seamlessly control your garage door from anywhere. And you can begin your 30 day trial right from there. And it'll ask you if you're already a MyQ account holder, or if you are new to MyQ, you can just hit the learn more button, which will take you through the process of setting up the account. Because I'm already MyQ connected, I'm gonna hit the sign in button, and it's gonna ask you to sign in. Now there are multiple ways for you to sign in, so it's completely your choice as to how you want to sign in, uh, but However you do sign in, regardless of what you currently use to sign in, that's the method you want to use. Now, depending on your sign in method, it may require you to allow access for MyQ. So go ahead and give that access if you need to. And then it's gonna bring you to a screen that says, welcome to the MyQ premium access. And it says there's just a few steps away from a premium garage access experience in your Tesla powered by MyQ. So you're gonna authorize your Tesla to access your MyQ account. And then you're gonna activate your garage plan with the 30 day trial. Once again, if you don't have the trial anymore, you'll just have to pay for a plan. Hit the authorize button, which will now synchronize your Tesla vehicle to your MyQ account. And at this point, your 30 day trial should be activated. Now, once again, if for some reason you've already used your 30 day trial, then you'll have to sign up here for one of these three plans. Once again, one year for $45, two years for $179, or three years for $299, which obviously is the most savings over the course of those 10 years. However, it's quite a bit of money up front, so you gotta determine what works best for you. And once you get it set up, you'll see down here was this MyQ Connected Garage, and it'll have an unlink account button, which means that it's currently linked, which is what we want. So here we can click on settings, and in the setting location, you can set your garage location. It'll know what your garage status currently is. It'll ask you uh, all these other questions, auto open when arriving. So that means that when you get close to your house, it'll open the garage door automatically based on how many feet away you wanna be. It'll auto close when leaving. If you wanted to set that up, you can have it where it automatically closes the garage door as you drive away and auto fold mirrors. So first things first, let's set the garage location. Park your vehicle near garage door before saving. Okay. 
now it knows where we currently are so we're gonna hit auto open when arriving and i'm gonna drop this down to i think like 20 feet should be fine so that means once i pull into the driveway the garage will start to open up and then we have auto close when leaving which i'm gonna do that just for this test but i think normally i don't prefer that because a lot of times when i leave in the morning my wife is behind me by about 10 minutes no reason for us to open the door and close the door open the door again 10 minutes later and then close the door again and then we're gonna also do auto fold mirrors because i'm really curious they just closed so <laughs> i don't know exactly what that does but we're gonna see just a little bit here so let's go ahead we're gonna close this out and then we are going to go for a quick ride around the block and we're going to see if the door closes number one and then we're going to see if the door opens when we get back so let's go ahead and go for a ride so just wanted to point out that you will see this little garage door opener at the top of your screen now when you're close to home so you can actually open and close your garage door manually and then of course you'll start seeing this here uh, which is in the settings menu it'll say that uh, your myq garage is connected It'll show you the garage door is currently open. That means it's connected and you can tap on this to close the garage door. But we're currently in the garage, so we don't want to do that right now. But anyway, let's go for a ride and uh, we're going to watch the garage door close and then we're going to watch the garage door open when we get back. So let's go ahead and uh, go for a ride here. Put this in drive and it says garage door closes in 20 feet. So we are pulling out of the driveway. Garage door is closing. Okay. And the mirrors are not folding back out. So it still shows that the garage door is closing. Okay, it's just closed now. So it looks like you have to manually fold the mirrors back out. So I am not a big fan of that. All right, so here we are coming back down the block. And we don't see anything at the top of the screen yet. And so as we get closer, we should start to see. There it is. So now it says garage door opens 20 feet or 30 feet. There's 20 feet. My mirrors have just folded in automatically if that's a feature you like and garage door opens in five feet says it opens now garage door is now opening and of course once again you can adjust the range of how far out you want the garage door to open maybe 20 feet's not enough but now here we are and we're in the garage and as you can see it says garage door opens now now it shows the garage door as open well, there you go, everybody. There is the MyQ connected garage door opener ability from your Tesla vehicle. And it's really cool to have that geolocation so you can open and close the garage door automatically, which is really nice. But anyway, I really like this feature. I think it's really cool for the money. That's up to you whether or not this is a really cool feature for you to have, or if you'd rather just put one of those garage door openers up on your visor. Hey, it's up to you how you want to go ahead and do this. But for now you can get a home link installed for that 350 dollars or you can go with the myq which will save you some money on the short term but may end up costing you more on the long term however of course if you have multiple teslas this will definitely be more worth it in my opinion or if you're the type of person who gets a new tesla every few years three five six years maybe uh this is probably the better route in my opinion but anyway i hope this video helped you out if you did please go ahead and give it a thumbs up just below if you're not already a subscriber to the channel please hit that subscribe button just below the video there and of course we do a lot of videos here on this channel for tesla so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for more tesla videos coming soon and more accessories for your tesla of course, I'd like to thank you very much again for watching. You can reach out to us on all of our social medias, which will be located in the description below the video, along with some links for the MyQ Garage Hub as well. I'd like to thank you very much again for watching today's episode. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to tech motoring. And we'll see you on the next episode.